Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green artifact deck featuring the full playset of Teething Wormlets as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This cute 1 mana 1 1 has Death Touch as long as we control 3 or more artifacts, and whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control, we gain 1 life. And if it's the first time this ability resolved this turn, we can also put a plus one plus one counter on the teething wormlet. So a great one drop that will scale into the late game and help us gain life against aggressive decks while picking up extra plus one plus one counters. Then we also have the full set of the stalwart at one mana, which is reminiscent of the sentinel, can tap an untapped artifact or creature we control to add one mana of any color. So this has the advantage of also being able to tap artifacts to make mana. So sometimes we have an artifact token like a clue token token or maybe a treasure token that we can tap with a stalwart to make one mana if we don't have a creature available. And then all these one drops can set up some very explosive starts, especially alongside Gala Greeters, the one one with Alliance, saying whenever another creature enters, we either get a plus one plus one counter, we can make a tapped treasure token, or we gain two life. So one of the best sequences this deck is capable of is a turn one stalwart, turn two play Gala Greeters, and then using the stalwart we can still play a Wormlet, which will trigger Gala Greeters, we can make a treasure token to help make more mana on the following turn, and because an artifact entered, the Wormlet gets a plus one counter and we gain one life so all of a sudden we have four permanents in play on turn two and we're setting up for a very powerful mid game so that's one of those exciting starts we also have the full set of beast caller which can also be quite nice alongside an early stalwart as we can quickly deploy our creatures and start picking up extra plus one plus one counters if the beast caller dies then we can still move those counters elsewhere so it has a bit of insurance against removal and I'm also playing the full set of a Reckoner Bankbuster, of course an artifact to enable Wormlet, and also a nice source of card advantage in the grindier matchups where the opponent has removal for our early creatures. And then I'm also playing Bankbuster because I finally found a home for the Bankbuster plus Kodama synergy. And if you don't know, Bankbuster of course enters with three charge counters on it, so it does count as a modified creature as soon as it turns into a creature after you crew it, and we can crew it on turn three with Kodama, saying a modified creature we control have trample and whenever a modified creature we control deals combat damage to a player we get to search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped so now on turn three we can already start ramping by getting extra forests in play if the opponent cannot block our bank buster and a 4-4 trampler is pretty difficult to block early on so that's a very nifty interaction then we also have the full set of Briarbridge Tracker, essentially a 4-3 Vigilance when we play it, because it will make a clue token when it enters, and as long as we control a token, the Tracker gets plus 2 plus 0, the clue token another artifact to enable a Wormlet, and even if we sacrifice a clue token to draw a card later in the game, we still maybe have the treasure tokens from Gala Greeters, or even the one we eventually get from a Reckoner Bankbuster to give the tracker the plus two plus O bonus. So great three drop that provides a bit of card advantage. And then we also have the full set of Augur of Autumn. This is kind of our late game plan in this deck. Once the board stalls out, we'll have Augur of Autumn, which lets us play a lands of the top of our deck. And as long as we have Coven enabled, which means three different powers among our creatures, we can also also play creatures of the top of our deck and outside of our Reckoner Bankbuster all the cards in our deck that aren't lands are creatures so that's also one of the reasons why I'm not playing any removal spells like Tail Swipe in this deck is to keep the creature count for Augur as high as possible and to have as many artifact synergies as well for cards like the Teething Wormlet and the more creatures also the better for Gala Greeters so Augur can help us play a whole bunch of creatures of the top which is a great way to take over the late game and then at 4 mana, Clay Champion, another incentive to stick to Mono Green, can play it for 4 mana, in which case it will enter as an 8 8, a 2 2 with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then as we get to the late game, maybe put more lands in play with Augur. We can also play it off the top for maybe larger numbers, in which case it will come into play as an even larger creature. And because it has all those plus 1 counters, it also counts as a modified creature, which of course works very nicely with Kodama, which can now give a trample so the opponent won't be able to chum block the champion to stay alive. 
And then topping off our curve, we also have two copies of the Silver Bank Elder, which also works very nicely with the Augur of Autumn game plan of playing a whole bunch of creatures off the top of our deck, because whenever we cast a creature spell, we can either destroy an artifact or enchantment, look at the top five cards of our library to find a land and put it in play tapped, or gain four life. So this can be a great way to stabilize against red aggressive decks. And then maybe if we find a land pocket on the top of our deck that we can see with Augur, we can also choose the second mode to maybe keep finding more creatures instead. It's also very fun when it goes off. Also a great pairing alongside Defiler of Vigor, and I've definitely featured a deck with both of them before, and that's awesome with the Augur of Autumn, as we can now play creatures of the top at a discount and put plus one counters on the entire team, maybe have a Kodama to give the team Trample as well, so that's another card you could play, but I'm keeping the curve relatively low since we only have 23 lands, and I want to focus on those explosive starts with the Stalwart, as opposed to having a ton of expensive cards in the deck, since Clay Champion still scales nicely into the late game, we have clue tokens we can sacrifice, bankbuster to activate, and maybe creatures to play off the top, so there's usually no shortage of mana sinks. And then a mana base, just 22 forests and 1 Boseju. Want all my lands to make green mana for Clay Champion, even though we could technically play some green-white dual lands, in case we want to use a white ability from a Clay Champion to put plus 1 counters on other creatures, but I'm just gonna keep things simple, also makes the mana base much more budget-friendly, as opposed to playing a second color. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and this hand's a little slow to get going. Although it does have some powerful cards, so maybe it's still worth a try. Hope to draw two drop on curve. Up against a red aggro. So champion's one of our better cards, and so is silverback. And turn one stalwart can also come in handy. So if we maybe miss on a fourth line drop, it can still make mana with our clue token, even if they kill the tracker itself. It's gonna be a flame breather on two. And a Gala Greeter is another great draw. So, next turn I could already cast a Clay Champion now. Although I expect him to remove the Greeters before it gains any life. Swift Spear. Okay, what's next? Play with Fire. Yep. Gala Greeter's down and we're taking a significant beating here. Six down to twelve. So play Tracker, and then happy to trade it for any of the opponent's creatures. Stalwart, I guess, could attack since I'm not planning to block with it necessarily, although eh, that's not necessarily true. If our opponent plays a Thundering Raichu, I might be forced to chump to save myself a bit of damage. And then we could go straight into a Silverback Elder next turn. And especially with a Fable now, that can blow up artifacts and enchantments as well. Hopefully no attacks, and yeah, that worked. So, yeah, Silverback. Tapping our token here. 5-7 should be large enough to block anything. And then next turn... We can either gain some life or start taking out those artifacts and enchantments. A reckless Impulse triggers Flame Breather and Swift Spear. Finds a Defiler of Instinct. So they can maybe play that next turn. Also a great combo with the Mechanized Warfare, which no doubt could be in the opponent's deck, but that's something else the Elder can take out. So they might attack with a Shaman just to be able to play another Fable. Which will trigger Flame Breather as well. So we've got our work cut out for us. Hopefully Augur of Autumn can find lots of creatures on top. And then step one. Thing blew up the fresh Fable. Play a land and a tracker. And it's only a matter of time now before we can completely take over. At 9 life I should probably just gain 4, and then next turn we can destroy the second Fable. Play defense, since Tracker doesn't have a great attack into Flame Breather. Defiler 
can maybe take out a Stalwart if they have another one drop. And a Kumano will do exactly that. Another Stalwart incoming to trigger Elder. So yeah, I think this Elder by itself is gonna be able to defeat Monored. Play a Wormlet first. And take out Reflection. Play Tracker. And could look at the top, since we don't get to play Bankbuster. Maybe find a land. Another land we can play. And then Stalwart, sure. And then now... Could maybe gain some more life. And do I start attacking? Can't attack into the 4 4 first strike. And our opponent could still play Mechanized Warfare and then deal quite a bit of damage with a Defiler afterwards if they sandbag some spells. So we should try and close out the game as soon as possible, which probably involves a large Clay Champion, especially if we can give a Trample with Kodama. Defiler keeps taking out our 1 1s. Although we still have a nice spread of power and toughness for Coven. Adversary can kill the Wormlets before it grows even more. But no good attacks. And Clay Champion we can play for X equals 4 perhaps. And anything we need to take out. Let's just gain 4 life. Okay, so that clay champion can start attacking while the other one can play defense if necessary. Yeah, Silverback Elder, quite the card here, and there's the Mechanized Warfare. The opponents on empty. Maybe their best bet was playing Warfare and keeping some red cards in hand to play afterwards. But now we can just destroy the enchantments. And yeah, our opponent knows that the writing's on the wall. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is reasonable if we can find a third land. Beast Caller into Kodama. Could play Greeters now as well. Curtains from our opponents. So that will get in the way of Beast Caller, so we'll go with the Gala Greeters instead. Opponent Grixis Colors. Let's gonna have a look with the curtains. And they may not take anything since we're stuck on two. Takes Beast Caller but draws into a third land. And the curtains is gonna stay back, otherwise, Kodama put a count from Greeters would have let us search up another one. So in that case, I'll just play a tracker. And make a treasure with the Greeters. No attacks. Could play an Augur of Autumn, maybe play a Land of the Top, and we would also have Coven enabled. A Liliana to make a sacrifice, perhaps. Something suspicious is going on. And for once it's not my fault. Alright. I'll keep the tracker to pressure Liliana. Another curtains. So what's the best I can do? Attack Liliana, maybe play a clay champion, which with Kodama can trample over to hopefully finish off the planeswalker next turn. Alright, let's see if they have an answer to it. Gonna be the Midnight Sky, 5-5 five, five, Flying Menace. And discard one Kodama. Okay, so Kodama for Trample, and then I should still be able to play a Bankbuster as well. Let's 
opponent could just trump with a midnight sky to make his discard in which case all right they did not block with the curtains which seemed free here so now we get to take out liliana opponent can make his discard too or they can bring back a creature all right so what do i keep feels like augur's going to be the best one so i'll discard silver back and bank buster Could have also cracked a clue to maybe get a bit more info. Although, I'm kind of happy keeping the treasure around since we don't have a ton of lands in play. Alright, now the curtains activate, so I guess they can take Augur anyways. And find a tracker. Alright, I guess I might crack the clue end of turn now. And maybe find another Augur. There we go. Step one, play Augur. Maybe there's a land on top. Or a one drop we can play. And then attack with champion. Okay, so that's working out nicely. Now I'm gonna search a forest, so it will shuffle away the silver back. But then there might have been a land on top to play with Augur afterwards. Plenty of card advantage. And this 8-8 eight eight does not mess around. Okay. Fair enough. Hostile Takeover, not enough to kill Clay Champion since it still has those 6 plus 1 counters. But does deal with the rest. And, uh, yeah, Tracker can crack a clue. Or I could play Stalwarts to have extra fodder in case of another Liliana. If I crack the clue now and draw lands, I can still play another Stalwart. And then the second Tracker will enable the first one. Their opponent's at four, and if they draw land, they should be dead. Ah, another hostile takeover, once again, does not deal with champion. So I think our opponent throws in the towel here by attacking. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and has potential. Wormlets into a Beast Caller, turn three Tracker, grow both Wormlets and Beast Caller. And then Kodama could be great. Definitely need a third land as well. Opponent blue-red. Okay, let's hit for one, play Beast Caller. And our opponent may already have an answer at the ready. At least they needed to deal themselves one damage. And then Tracker, even if it gets removed, will still leave behind a clue token at least. Electrostatic Infantry, so definitely a blue-red spells type of deck. Hit for two. Pretty happy if we can trade a Tracker for an Infantry. And then next turn Wormlet into another Tracker is a great sequence. Opponent might have a Lightning Strike here. Can be a third path iconoclast to start making tokens. That one's good against us because we don't have any removal, so it will stick around to make a lot of one ones. But we can try and power through it for now. Opponent falls to seven. And even though we don't have any cards left in hand, we still have these clue tokens that can turn into extra cards. Just need to make sure we have at least one token to pump the trackers. Although we might also find a Gala Greeters to make a treasure. So the Iconoclast will buy the opponent a lot of time. Maybe we can eventually find Kodama to give the Wormlets trample. Opponent deciding which creature to kill here, perhaps. And they're gonna keep it as an instance so the infantry can grow up to a 3-4 at instant speed. So yeah, we need to find some action. Bankbuster helps, so that'll grow the Wormlet some more. Maybe forced issue on removal on Wormlet right now. So the trackers still get to attack. And then we could also use Boseju to maybe clear one of the soldier tokens, which is an artifact. 
So that could catch the opponent off guard. Another Iconoclast, yeah, that's good. So now the Ancestral Anger will make two tokens. And the infantry will be large enough to block a tracker profitably. So the game has stalled out and we need to top deck. Augur of Autumn to play Creatures of the Top is probably our best avenue to victory. Or maybe a large Clay Champion backed by Kodama for Trample. But at least we're still at a healthy 24. Opponent's not in a position to attack us yet, so we have time. And there's Kodama. So does that enable an attack right now? I don't think so. Since the trackers themselves don't have Trample, I could crew Bankbuster attack, but the infantry just blocks it. So I don't think that goes well for us, unless... Yeah, let's say we play Kodama, Crew Bangbuster, Attack. Let's say the opponent does not have any interaction, which is also important. Then they eat Bangbuster. Wormlet tramples, so they have to put three toughness in front. And then they might end up jumping with the uh, Iconoclast. So maybe that's not so bad. So we'll see if this resolves in the first place. Although it does seem like our opponent has instant speed or interaction available, which will make attacking kind of a disaster. So, might have to scrap that plan and just draw with a Bankbuster instead. Even a protection spell, just making two 1-1s one -ones here would be bad for me. So I'll play a Stalwart. And pass it back. So now we're probably back on the Clay Champion plan. That was a fading hope for the Wormlets. So our opponent's getting more aggressive. Glad to get fading hope out of the way if our plan is to eventually play a large Clay Champion. And then of course still hoping for an Augur of Autumn as well. Another Reckless Impulse is a good one. So our opponent is generating a ton of value off Iconoclast and Infantry, but luckily not in a position to really attack. If they eventually find a Balmor to pump the team, they can turn the corner very quickly. So we're running out of time. And get to untap. And there's Augur of Autumn, perfect. We have Coven enabled. So let's play it first. Play a land, another land we can maybe draw with Bankbuster. And there's Clay Champion, although I won't be able to play that one just yet. So I'll play Wormlets and pass. And then end of turn maybe crank the clue token, since we'll be able to make a treasure token with Bankbuster, so I'm not worried about shrinking down the trackers. So yeah, finding that Augur was huge. Let's see if that uh, can stick around for a while. But if they answer Augur, they're less likely to have removal for Kodama, and then a trampling champion might get us there. There's Balmor, like we were afraid of. So if our opponent has another instant in hand, they could pump their team but probably still not quite in a position to turn the team sideways. So we'll draw. I'll land on top. And another Kodama. So probably fine to have a backup Kodama. Could also draw it with Bankbuster. And then be satisfied with a smaller Clay Champion. Would still be pretty large, admittedly. Can play it as an 11-11. Although, bigger might be better in this case when our opponent has this many tokens out. So, see, 8. So x equals 4. Would also grow the Wormlets. Suppose we could have still drawn with Bankbuster and then used a treasure token to uh, play an equally large champion. But then I would lose the tokens for Tracker. Not sure if that's a problem. Okay, so... Pass it back. And then next turn, Champion can attack. Opponent might have a Fading Hope here. In which case they're probably better served waiting until their turn to get the Balmore bonus. Okay, one of the cards in hand is a land. 
And step one might be to draw with a bank buster, see what's next. Tracker on top. Okay, so could send the Wormlet and Clay Champion, although we have to be careful that Wormlet doesn't lose Death Touch if her opponent bounces Clay Champion, which would be the case. If they bounce Champion, I would rather replay a large one as opposed to playing a bunch of other stuff out. So I think we'll leave the Wormlet back, just send Champion, and if it trades for infantry and a bunch of 1-1s, one I'm happy. But they might just have another Fading Hope. So the question is whether the trackers also want to attack. So let's say they Fading Hope, they get to pump the team, eats tracker with infantry. Doesn't sound great to me. So let's keep it simple. Four mana, what is this? Soaring City, fair enough. That's probably worse than Fading Hope, all things considered, so works for me. 4x equals 4 again. Alright. Pass it back. Opponent needs to top deck. Play with fire going upstairs. That's not gonna save them, I don't think. They can make a desperation attack. Yep. But we know they're empty handed, so we can line up some very favorable blocks. If our opponent drew another non creature spell, we might have been in trouble. But now our opponent's very dead. So yeah, close one here against Is It Spells, Iconoclast, definitely a scary card to face when we don't have any removal for it. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's missing a 2-drop, otherwise I like it. And then Stalwarts can potentially play turn 3 champion if we find another creature here. Up against Monoret. Alright, it's gonna be Mono Trackers. Turn to Adversary as a 3-3, so our opponent off to a great start. Happy to trade a tracker for whatever the opponent presents. Greeter is a turn late. So I'll hit for one, since I'm not planning to block with a Stalwart. And yeah, ideally, play a Clay Champion next turn. Should be able to hold off most ground creatures. Phoenix Chick can still fly over, and our opponent had the Lightning Strike. So they're going to hit us for 6 down to 10. And uh, Clay Champions are best bet, I think. And then next turn I can maybe go Greeters into Stalwart to gain some more life back. Hope they don't have an Abrade. Squee can help them go wide. So if I kill Squee, they won't be able to bring it back right away. Or I can block the Adversary here. I think killing Squee still makes a little bit more sense. Take 5, 6, 7. Shouldn't be dead to any burn spells. And then I can play Greeters. Definitely need to gain life with it. So can I afford to play a Tracker afterwards, or do I need to play Stalwart to keep more blockers back? Greeters into Tracker means we have two profitable blocks. Yeah, we could still die, but if I go Greeters into Stalwart, then what happens? I guess I could still crack my clue token end of turn at least, so maybe that's still fine. And we'll gain two life. Okay, we'll pass and then see if they can kill the Greeters, in which case we'll Love to find another, or maybe a Wormlet, to gain some life back as well. Silverback Heller, of course, high on our list. Opponent goes all out. So, 
I can block adversary, jump etching, trade for the 1-1, and draw with a clue on the way out. That's the best we can do. Another greeters, excellent. So if they can't finish us off this turn, we might be able to survive. So yeah, greeters number two. And they might have to take out the first one now. Play tracker. And gain two. So now our opponent is in a spot to potentially get back a squee. So can I afford to attack with champion points at 18? It's a little bit risky, but if I hit them for 8 and they attack me back next turn, I guess there's also Mishra's Foundry to take into account. Yeah, I think I'll wait one turn. If I hit them for 8 down to 10, then I could maybe kill them next turn, but I might leave myself vulnerable when I don't necessarily have to. Opponent drew another Lightning Strike, and then they can get back Squee attack. And kill Squee, take three, so we don't have to jump with the Gala Greeters. I guess it's four here, down to two. And then next turn, play another Tracker, gain two. And then I could still die to a Lightning Strike, but that's about it. Thing that's still better long term. And there's a Wormlet, perfect, so now even a Lightning Strike wouldn't be enough. And uh, I guess a treasure token is fine, which will trigger the Wormlet once again. And our opponent concedes. Awesome. Close one against Moderat. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing maybe a one drop here to really make things exciting, but I'll try it. There we have it. So one of the advantages of being on the draw as opposed to the play. Wormlet into Greeters. As we're facing Grixis, Lightning Strike will take care of it. So do we Beast Scholar or do we Greeters? I think Greeters making mana with the treasure tokens early still has more upside. Opponent got a Celestis. And we get to untap. So I could play Augur as the most mana efficient play, although we won't be able to play anything of the top right away. So I think second greeters might still be slightly better. Now we'll make a tapped treasure token. Attack for one. And then next turn I can play a large clay champion. Opponent has a sabotage to make me discard two cards. Well, a land can go and then maybe beast caller at this stage. And then we can play a clay champion. Probably fine to play a land as well. This way I don't have to use my treasure. And then one of them could make a treasure. The author could get a plus one counter. Don't want to put a counter on both because then we wouldn't have Coven enabled for Augur to play creatures of the top. And the more mana we have, the more likely we can play expensive creatures as well. And then next turn by playing Augur, let's say they kill Clay Champion, I can make a 3-3 Greeters, have 1-2-3. And then still be able to keep going with Augur. Play with Fire, deals with a 2-2, and No Way Out makes me discard Augur of Autumn, sadly. But we get to hit for 9, so we've got our opponent on a 2 turn clock. And uh, yeah, I could keep land in hand to maybe bait them into spending their mana making me discard. Don't know if it's super relevant at this stage. Since your opponent has to answer the clay champion to survive. Cut down on Gala Greeters. So if they can cast another spell, they would gain one life with the Celestis and maybe survive, or they can activate it themselves. 
Okay, so our opponent would go to one here. This card's a burn down the house. Making devil tokens would be a decent way to survive champion unless we find Kodama. And there's another clay champion, okay. So put them to one. Actually, I just realized I could have killed my opponent by using the treasures for white with clay champion. An interaction that doesn't come up very often. But uh, I guess we'll just play a bigger green one now. So definitely a mistake here. And then X equals 2 will suffice. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand has some decent cards, although not the best synergies. Nothing to really go with Kodama. No artifacts for Wormlet outside of a clue token. So it's kind of disjointed. I think we can do better. And this certainly counts. Elder might be a little pricey. But the start of turn one, Stalwart, turn two Greeters into Wormlet, is the best one we have available. Opponent taps out for Epicure. And then even if they kill the Stalwarts, I'll be able to play Champion next turn. And they're more likely to want to kill Greeters anyway. Yeah, they had to play with fire, so they could have prevented this from happening had they kept that up instead of playing Epicure. And now hope they don't have an abrade, and this champion should be able to take over. Can tap the treasure with a stalwart instead of having to sacrifice it. And then Wormlets can attack for three, also gaining us some life back. And the next turn Bankbuster is a nice addition. Our better draws include Kodama to give Champion Trample. Crystal Grotto, also a nice land to include if you're a monocolor deck. But because of Champion, we can't play any colorless lands like Grotto or Mishra's Foundry, which would otherwise be a decent card as well. Take one down to 19. And yeah, this Epicure is going to have to chum block. Bankbuster grows Wormlet some more. So if they have a Lightning Strike, they probably have to fire it off right now. And then I might as well draw and see what's next. Okay, Stalwarts could trade for Epicure, although they're more likely to have to chump Clay Champion. They could, of course, still have an abrade for it. But I'm still fine with this attack. Opponent trades for Stalwart, so... Is there an abrade? Rending Flame instead, alright. Killing Wormlets. That was a good answer, too. But Clay Champion... Still presenting Lethal alongside Bankbuster next turn, if we can find a way to crew it. And between Kodama... And our tracker. We have quite a few ways to do it. Still at 20 life against Mono Red. There's Squee. Squee's pretty good since they can maybe leave that token back to block next turn. And a Wormlet the draw. So I won't be able to crew Bankbuster this turn, but I can draw and see what else is next. And there's Tracker, so would have been lethal had we drawn that first. For now, I can go Wormlet into Tracker. And get an extra plus one counter out of the deal. And then now Tracker can block Squee. Play with Fire kills Wormlet. So putting the opponent to one still seems worthwhile. Thundering Raiju, 
Don't know if that's going to be able to attack here. And the Raichu on defense is pretty sad. So Phoenix Chick might as well attack. And her opponent sends in the Raichu. So I could trade for it. Although if I take it and draw another creature to crew Bankbuster, we guarantee lethal. But is in a position to get back Squee. So they're probably happy to uh, trump with it, all things considered. So I think the safest play might actually be to trade and kind of aim for a longer game as opposed to kind of playing into Squee chumping and then the Raiju and Chick attacking me in the meantime. Of course Kodama would still be lethal, giving Champion Trample. And a Silverback Elder, also quite effective. So, yeah, now I'll attack, make them chump, play Elder. And uh, it's going to be pretty hard for the opponent to burn us out. Could have also crewed the Bank Buster, but opponent just gets Squee back anyway. So I'll just keep the Elder back on defense. Opponent goes digging with the Blood Token. And a Kumano puts me to 12. Phoenix Chick to 10. Double Phoenix Chick. So our opponent seems dead. Only one blocker. Two attackers. And there we have it. So, yeah. Got the ideal start here in the final game. And that's why the Stalwart is so critical for this deck to function. Giving you those explosive starts. Tapping clue tokens or treasure tokens for mana also comes up. And on occasion could make white mana for clay champion. So that's another neat interaction. So yeah, overall this mono green deck, I would not recommend it for the ranked ladder, since it's pretty weak to the blue-white soldier tribal deck, which is quite popular, since we don't have any removal, so the opponent can just build up their board, draw a bunch of cards, play all their lords, and especially the one that gives flying to the team is very hard to beat. And it's also not the best against kind of these Grixes and other black mid-range decks that are packing a ton of removal, since they can just take out your key engine creatures, and then you're never gonna get anywhere. But in the play queue, I've been facing a lot of Monorad, as you could tell, and the Monorad matchup seems very good for us since we have plenty of life gain, a quick start to get on the board, and then Silverback Elder, of course, another one of those heavy hitters that can take over once we play it. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.